Hey everyone, John from Big Dreams Travel here. Yesterday, we went to the first Six Flags in the country to reopen after the COVID-19 shutdowns, Six Flags Frontier City. Coming up, I'll share our thoughts on the reopening procedures, the crowds, and everything else you might be interested in. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Make sure you go down and like the video and then subscribe down below if you like all of our travel-related content. Well, today I wanna to share an experience that my family had when we went to the first Six Flags Park in the country to reopen after the COVID-19 shutdowns. It just so happened that this park is the closest Six Flags to us, and so I just wanted to talk through a little bit of what we experienced, as it may help those of you from around the country when the Six Flags Park's close to you reopen, as what I've seen are the policies at all Six Flags Parks, more or less, they're going to be opening all of those parks in a very similar way. Now let me say, I didn't do any filming inside of the park this time. We had our family there, we had our kids there, and we wanted to make sure we were following the safety guidelines, making sure our kids were keeping their masks on, and so I just figured filming would be a little obtrusive as we were doing all those other things, or that I couldn't quite pay as much attention to the kids as I needed to. But if you guys want, comment down below. I'll go back and take some live video. We're certainly gonna go back in the coming days and weeks. And so I think I feel a little more comfortable now. Uh, the kids got familiar with the mask routine. And so comment below if you wanna see some film footage. We should be able to do that uh, here in the coming days and weeks. Well, first of all, I think the biggest takeaway uh, for me was the crowd levels. They were extremely low here at Six Flags Frontier City. You know, we were there at park opening, which is 11 a.m. for our park. And I bet there were maybe 20 cars in the parking lot and they were not coming in very fast after we got there. Maybe 100 people maximum when the park opened, which is very different than it normally is in a normal summer. The crowds grew a little bit throughout the day, but I thought the reservation system did a pretty good job of limiting the number of people in the park. And, you know, just to give you an idea, we stayed for about two and a half hours. We never really waited for any ride at all. Now, when we were walking at the right as we were leaving, we did see that the Steel Lasso, which is one of the, which is a family coaster, pretty popular ride in the park. It had maybe what I would say was a 10 minute wait, but that was really the only line we kind of saw all day long. Another big factor that we saw was that there were a few rides that seemed to be having either maintenance issues or they just weren't open. One that I know was having a maintenance issue was the, was the wooden roller coaster in the park. It's called Wildcat. And it did run for a few minutes when the park opened, but by the time we got back there, maybe 45 minutes after the park had been open, um, it was shut down for maintenance. There were some people uh, hanging around waiting, but eventually the team members kind of told uh, those people it wasn't going to open up super quick. They might as well go do some other things. I would say some of this is to be expected as the parks have been closed uh, for a few months. You know, I think the Six Flags parks, they're not open daily throughout the year um, like a Disney park or Universal park. But they obviously have full-time mechanics and ride team members that start those rides up during the off-season. And so it may be even during this closure that didn't happen quite as often as normal just because they were trying to limit the people in the park. But we did see a few rides uh, broken down. We also saw that none of the water rides in this park were functioning, which we just assumed was due to the ongoing pandemic. There was really no signage about this. There was no announcement about this. The water rides were just closed. Uh, I find it kind of strange because those of you, if you follow Universal Orlando or SeaWorld that have already opened parks in the country, they're reopening their water rides just as, uh, and, and water parks are now open in, in many states. But Six Flags appears to not be doing that. Again, it's kind of strange, and my wife and I were talking as we walked around. They have things like the carnival games. They're fully operational. The arcade that you can go inside the building and play all the arcade games, fully operational. Um, those, to me, seem like they would be as risky as an outdoor uh, water attraction. Um, we, of course, there's the mask issue on water rides, places like Universal Orlando. You don't wear your mask on the water ride. Once you're in your seat on the ride, you can take your mask off and put it in a baggie or whatever you have with you. But Six Flags, 
doesn't have those water rides open or so it appears. Now, I will say when we left the park at about uh, 1.30 or so, there was some mechanics working on the water ride. There was still no water running down the, the drop or anything like that. Um, and neither the log ride or the river rapids were operating that day. But there were some mechanics working on the log ride. So I don't want to say for sure that it was due to the pandemic because there was no official word, but the water rides weren't open. So that may be something to expect in your Six Flags Park when it opens near you. Now, when it comes to the food service, Six Flags has taken some big steps towards helping promote distancing as mobile ordering is now available throughout the park on the, on the Six Flags app. We weren't eating a meal in the park on this visit. I did look it up and everything appeared to be very easy to use. Um, we will do that at some point uh, here in the next few weeks and, and just let you know how it goes. They have queue areas marked at all the restaurants or, or food stands with distancing stickers on the ground. Now, most places I saw only had maybe two, sometimes three stickers. So if the line wasn't too long, that's great. If the line gets longer than two or three parties, I can see where there may be a little bit harder um, to create that distance between parties if that's important to you. Of course, no lines we saw were at that point because the park was extremely uncrowded with the reservation system. So that may be their uh, philosophy on that. Also, when dealing with Six Flags, you know that most members or pass holders have these refillable drink cups when they come to the park. For now, the team members are simply filling up a large, I would say 32 ounce sized fountain soda cup for you with the drink of your choice, and then you can pour it, pour it into the refillable cup yourself. There were a couple of spots in Frontier City where there used to be self-service drink machines. They have now put those dispensers behind the counter where only the team members can get to them. And so they will, again, give you one of those cups. It is more than enough um, drink to fit inside your souvenir cup. We even had a little bit left in the paper cup they gave us. Um, so that worked fine. Just maybe a slight inconvenience that you have to go find a spot if you want to pour it in that cup. Or, of course, you could just leave it in the paper cup. As far as cleaning and sanitizing, we did see that some team members were spraying down benches and railings and touch points around the park. They did have what looked like to be a team of, of people that had a special um, type of vest that you could identify them as the cleaning staff. And, and so they were wiping things down. The team members were not wiping down each ride vehicle after each ride or each coaster car nor were they actively making you take hand sanitizer before or after the ride like they do at a place like Universal Orlando. But with that said, there was no shortage of hand sanitizer stations. We found one at the entrance and exit area of every attraction we went on. Even the very small attractions in the kitty land, there was hand sanitizer and, and plenty of it to go around. Okay, next topic, masks. We know this is the hot topic around the country for many people. And I am certainly not going to get into the issue of mask effectiveness or anything like that. I will just say that for now, the Six Flags policy says masks are required. Now, I'm a rule follower. And so my opinion is, regardless of the effectiveness or beliefs, I'm a rule follower. And if that's the policy, I'm going to agree with them. If I'm going to go into the park, I'm going to wear my mask. That rule is not really followed very effectively, in our opinion, by many, uh, by a majority of people that came into Frontier City while we were there. I would say maybe 50% of people were wearing masks when we saw them, but the other 50% either had them on incorrectly, maybe just on their chin, or pulled up off of their mouth or down below their nose, there were maybe 10% of people that they didn't wear them at all. Um, of course, these parks have medical exceptions, so I'm not, we're not speaking um, that those people didn't have that. That's entirely possible. But uh, I would say 50% of the people in the park either didn't wear them or wore them incorrectly. Um, I also saw, or I never saw, a cast member throughout the day ask a guest to put a mask on. So the rule will it really was not enforced I didn't see administrators or people in, in suits or dress clothes. I did not see them out in the park anywhere having people put masks on, unfortunately. Um, and so it was kind of a free-for-all in where you, whether you wore your mask or not. I'll also say, 
Um, there were team members that I saw, they were not wearing their masks correctly uh, either. It was a warm day. Uh, it was a warm day, um, not a huge breeze. Um, we made it okay in our masks. Um, I can talk more about those in another video. If you're interested in seeing the masks we wore, I can show you guys those in another video. We made it okay. Our kids did much better than I thought they were going to do. Um, our four-year-old did fantastic. Um, he never complained hardly one bit, maybe a little bit that the straps hurt his ears. We really did okay um, on a hot day. And so that's kind of the mask issue. Again, just putting this information out there so that you know if you go to Six Flags, that rule may or may not be enforced, probably depending upon the administration of the park you're going to. Well, that's going to do it for what we experienced for our first time back in an amusement park since these COVID-19 closures. So again, if you want to know more, comment below. As more Six Flags parks are slated to open about a week after I'm recording this, this will become a bigger um, issue for people around the country. Well, have a great day, everyone, and keep dreaming of future travels. Mm -hmm.